everyone. Welcome to episode number 505 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. Sustainability takes center stage in this week's podcast. My guests are Ian Galloway from NXP and Richard Fix from Bosch Sensor Tech, and we're talking all about this year's NXP Hover Games. We discuss why sustainable food ecosystems is the theme of this year's Hover Games, the details of the components and technologies that are provided to the contestants, and how you can encourage positivity and change in the world by entering this unique design contest. Also this week, keeping with our sustainability theme, I investigate AIOF, that's right, Artificial Intelligence a fish, and how AI could help save Norway's endangered Atlantic salmon. All right, so without further ado, please welcome Richard and Ian to Fish Fry. Hi, Richard. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, Amelia. Thank you for having us. Great to be here today and looking forward to talking to you. Absolutely. Thank you. And hi, Ian. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Great to be here. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about the NXP Hover Games Challenge today. But before we get started, this is the third installment of your Hover Games Challenge. So for my audience who may not know, Ian, give me some background about this challenge and why it was created and what the first two years were like. Yeah, well, we're part of a mobile robotics team inside of NXP. And as building uh, drones and those types of small platforms for people to develop on, we wanted to have a drones for good type platform to work on. Challenge one was fighting fires with flyers. And we had some great insights there with people, you know, using a low cost drone to do really amazing sensor detection, those sorts of things. Our second challenge was Hover Games 2. It was called Help Drones Help Others During Pandemics. And in that one, we learned a lot of people wanted to start introducing the AI and companion computers. So this year, uh, we've got Hover Games Challenge 3, and their sustainability focus is on land, sky, and food supply, which is everything and anything to do with that food production and humans and food interactions. And we do introduce a lot more of the companion computer and AI into this particular challenge this time. Excellent. Now let's talk about that theme a bit more, Ian. Tell me more about why you guys chose this particular theme this year. First of all, we always want to focus on something positive, right? So, and I think we can use this type of challenge to sort of bring out the best in people and look at how we can use these technologies to either improve animal welfare, pollination of trees. It could have something to do with fish farming, or it could be just getting let's say, a soil test from point A to point B. There's a lot of other really interesting things to do. We could sniffing out when a crop is in bloom or having a problem. And then we introduced some new hardware this year in order to support that, including a rover kit as an optional thing instead of the drone. Some people can't fly a drone. And then, of course, our NavQ Plus companion computer, which has a neural net accelerator, and uh, Richard from uh, Bosch Sensor Tech is in, we're introducing the uh, the BME six eighty eight gas sensors with AI. So, can we talk a little bit more about the components and technologies provided to the contestants? If they're selected for the competition, they have to submit a proposal, and if they're selected, they get deeply discounted hardware. There's four different options. One is you can get the drone and the uh, all the rest of the components, the NavQ+, Plus, which is this companion computer, running the latest Ubuntu, the latest ROS2 development system, and comes with a camera, comes with the Bosch sensor, comes with all the cabling and everything involved there. So you can get the drone with that. You can get alternatively a buggy with that. And then for people that may have already uh, participated in the earlier hover games, they can choose just to get the companion computer and the sensor or just get the sensor if they've got some other setup that they want to use. Richard, can you tell me more about the Bosch sensor tech element here? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, our contribution is twofold. On the one hand, we have a special Bosch sensor tech sustainability award. And on the other hand, we will also provide some smart sensing solutions for the developer kits. 
Excellent. Richard, tell me more about the collaboration with Bosch Sensor Tech and why this is valuable to Bosch. Absolutely. Yeah. So first of all, we are very excited to participate here in this year's NXP Hover Games and to contribute as a partner. And from our point of view, this is a great opportunity to tackle real world problems and also enable industry collaboration. For us, the, the Hover Games become a part of an ecosystem which really helps participants to develop innovative solutions on the one hand, with cutting edge technology, and on the other hand, to address social and environmental problems. Now, one team will also win a sustainability award from Bosch Sensor Tech as well. Tell me about that. Yes, we basically decided for this award because we would like to give it to the team, which is basically having the most innovative, sustainable solution. So the award is basically um, a 500 euros voucher for the Arduino official store. And we're really excited to see our sensors in action and how they can help to tackle this year's Hover Game Challenge. Yeah, That's excellent. Okay, so Ian, what kind of timeline are we looking at for this challenge? And what can the contestants win? Right. Well, the timeline is short. The applications have to be submitted by October 30th. And so that's a bit of a proposal that you put together. We're partnered here with Hackster.io for the contest itself. So if you go to hovergames.com, can take you to the Hackster.io page where you just log in and the details are all there. But the application by October 30th, then we do a selection period to see who's selected. And then the final project submission goes uh, until February 19th. So you had another question, I think, as part of that. Uh, yeah. What can the contestants win? Ah, amazing stuff. We have quite a few prizes and we try to do that. Of course, there's a sustainability prize that Richard has. We have a grand prize of $5,000, second place of $3,000, third place of $1,500, and then three runner $500 vouchers for NXP Web Store. In addition to the Bosch Sensor Tech Sustainability Award, the Drone Code Foundation, which is the underlying software ecosystem that's being used here, is also offering a $500 open source award, they're calling it. Excellent. Now, Ian, where should my audience go for more information about this challenge? And are there any tutorials or additional tips available to help them on their way? Yeah, absolutely. So the best starting point is hovergames.com. That's our website, and that'll point them to register now, which will take them over to the Hackster.io contest page, and all the rules and details are on the contest page. In addition to that, our Hover Games drone and the buggy, we have a Git book, so it's nxp.gitbook.io, and that's where all sorts of tutorials and step-by-step assembly guides and, and examples are put. And the nice thing with the Git book is, you know, if we find people are having a a challenge getting a certain something configured, we can update those instructions very quickly there. There's also a Discord channel that's run for the contest that's linked off of the Hackster.io website as well. Excellent. Well, this was super cool. Thank you so much for joining me. But before I let you go, I'm going to throw a little off the cuff at both of you, Richard and Ian. So a lot of us can't have our favorite foods these days for some reason or another. It's travel restrictions, the restaurants closed. So Richard and Ian, if you could have one meal right now, doesn't matter if it's from the other side of the world, what would you have? Well, then I start. I was uh, growing up in Nuremberg, Germany. Yeah. So I would directly choose for Nuremberg sausages, yeah, which are very famous, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Great choice. How about you, Ian? Well, this is probably going to sound a little bit weird, but I recently I've developed uh, an affinity for like eggplant dishes. So I remember some eggplant tagine type of Indian food. It was just fantastic, a vegetarian type of dish. And it was uh, nice and spicy and flavorful. So I guess I'd go for that right now. <laughs> Great choices, both of you. I don't think I've had either of those answers since I've been asking that question. That's fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Amelia. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Have you heard that AI is helping save Norway's salmon species? So the technology at the heart of this salmon rescue is Huawei's Tech for All Sustainable Development Program. 
They have teamed up with Norway's BJFF, or Berlevag Hunter and Fishermen's Association, to come up with a solution to stem the tide of pink salmon from entering Norway's rivers. So why is this? Well, pink salmon, or also known as humpback salmon, since being introduced to Russia's White Sea in the 1950s, have been detrimental to Norway's native Arctic and Atlantic salmon populations. These humpback salmon, even though they are delicious, are causing problems for a couple of reasons. They introduce new diseases, and they reproduce a lot faster than the native fish, which means they are outcompeting the other salmon species for food and spawning grounds, and have caused the Atlantic salmon population to decline. Now, I hear you loud and clear, my friends. What does AI have to do with spawning salmon? So... In an effort to control the numbers of humpback salmon, Huawei and BJFF have installed an AI-enabled gate that can identify each fish. So here's how it works. There is a mechanical gate in the upstream channel of the Storelva River in Norway. When the fish are funneled into the river from the sea, an underwater camera in real time analyzes, with the help of an AI algorithm, each fish, and has been able to differentiate between Pacific and Atlantic salmon with an accuracy rate of 91%. So, say an Atlantic salmon or even a native Arctic salmon is identified by the camera. They are allowed to head on down the river. If a humpback is identified, it is sent over to the holding tank for removal. So, this kind of AI algorithm can also identify other kinds of fish as well. And it could be very well used in other areas of the world where invasive fish are threatening local populations. And it can do way more than just identify fish. Data from this AI-enhanced fish gate can reveal the migratory behavior of different species and provide further research that can help prevent overfishing as well. Vegard Kenner, the technical director at Huawei Norway, said this about the challenges and success of this project. Installing a diversion system in a turbulent river is an extremely challenging task. I was impressed with the efforts of our partners, BJFF, and the local community. Here, people aspire to prove the role that good management has in saving rivers from environmental disasters. So, if you want to find out even more information about AIOF, I've included a link in the YouTube description for this episode and on the associated landing page on eejournal.com. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow me or us on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me and a selection of fish fry podcasts as well. And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel too. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. Also, if you'd like more information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. 
Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of October 28th, 2022, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.